Hey everybody, this is E Meek, and I'm here with a Houdini tutorial. And it's not really a tutorial, I'm here to show you why Houdini kicks Maya all over the place. Not for the modeling, not for the dynamics, not for the particles, which it does kill Maya in. Not, sound, not taken away from Maya, Maya is wonderful. And you can get the exact same results in Maya that you can in Houdini. It's just how you get those results. I mean, look at the movie industry. It will show you that Maya is completely capable. But it's just not as feature-filled as Houdini. Uh, with Houdini, I don't need a separate compositor like Shape, Nuke, or Fusion. It's all combined right here in Houdini. Let's see Maya key a green screen. Or let's see, Ma let's, let's see Maya do a few things that we can do in Houdini with her compositor. So what I'm going to do first to demonstrate this, I'm going to go up here to my little tabs and select Composite View. Now this puts me into my composite. Right, as you can see right here, we have all of our channels, which is Object View, where we was. And we can image is where is our compositing view. Now we have this comp right here. I'm going to go into it. I'm going to tab a file node in. And that's going to bring in the default picture that comes with Houdini. So you can fiddle around with the, with the compositing aspect. Now if you tab this open and look at all the nodes, you can see there's a chroma key. You know, there's, all, there's rotoscoping. There's masks. All the common nodes and operations that you would find in any other... Um, compositor like shake okay so we're gonna give this butterfly a glow just to show you a quick way how this works okay so the first thing I'm gonna do right click on the output and start typing invert because I'm gonna add an invert node okay let's click on the fl display flag and now we have this invert node now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna click again and I'm gonna add a light Okay, there's our, our light there. So let's kind of mess with our light a little bit. Uh, let's see what we got here. Hmm. Let's make our cone angle maybe 14. Like that. Or in about 1. That looks pretty good. Let's go back here to our lighting. Uh, let's see if we can bring some of this out a little bit am I bringing our diffuse down okay there we got a pretty good little picture there and now I'm gonna add an edge detect right click and type edge and there's my edge detect boom now we have this funky looking pick huh so now what I'm wanting to do is I'm wanting to blur this so I'm gonna tab and type blur we're gonna have a we're gonna add a halo effect, a halo like a halo-ish glow to this, just as an example. I'm gonna pop this edge into my blur. Okay, let's bring the, the controls up for my blur. We'll make it a Gaussian filter, and we'll make the size about 31. So we're really blurred out there. Okay, so now after we do that, let's add a contrast node. There's our contrast node. Now we're going to set some of our contrast a little bit here. We're going to make this one minus 0 0.01, and we'll make this one 2. Like so. And now we have a really bright on his wings and stuff. Like here you can see where we're going with this. Okay. Now I'm going to add a brightness filter. And there's our bright filter. Let's do that. Now we want to turn the brightness up, to, I'm going to say, or down to about 0 0.73. That looks good. That, that'll be good. Okay, now let's add one more node. We're going to tab in a composite node. Hit tab and start typing composite. Okay. Now let us go up here and we'll pop brightness into the second input and we'll pop this default pick into the first input let's see what we got here and now as you can see we have this cool glow and if I move this around you can see what's going on this is being composited over that as you can see here 
and we have this nice little halo going around our butterfly. Let's look at the default pick. See, there's the original, and here's the composite. Now remember, you can do all kinds of cool effects with this. Um, and this is just for the compositing features alone. Um, let's go back into our, I don't know, let's see here, our lot. And let's mess with it a little bit. That was our diffuse. Uh, ambient light. Specular. I mean, you can just fool with the looks all you want. You can change the color if you want. I mean, it's just, now as you can see, it's kind of uh, glowing in a little yellowish color there. You can go in here and you can fool with this. I just wanted to show you how to do a halo effect. Just as a quick example, because it's it's really fast and it, and it shows how you can use Houdini as a very very powerful compositor like Shake, and I'm gonna say it's probably just as powerful as Shake. Maybe not quite because of rotoscoping and stuff. It does have rotoscoping, but but Shake is uh, you know it's it's a pretty it's a pretty old tool, but man, it's quite timeless. It's still one of my favorite compositors out there. And, uh, but what this does is, if I need to do anything really tedious, tedious rotoscoping or, or tedious keying where I'm going to need a key light or, or a prime at, yes, I'll use Shake. But for something simple and quick, and I don't want to fire up another application, and I want to composite my 3D geometry that I just modeled into a scene, I can do it right here, all within the same, all within the same interface. This is why Houdini blows Maya out of the water, because of all of the things like this. Houdini is more than just a 3D application. It is so broad and so complex that you can just study it for years and years and years before you ever really become a master of it. So check out the composite nodes. Check out the composite features. It's really, really great. And um, this is why I've chose Houdini over Maya, 3ds Max, Cinema 4D, or any of the like. So I... Uh, Thank you for watching, and we'll see you next time.